Hello, my name is John Mount. I'm preparing a small article and video introduction on a topic of machine learning, or what we now call basic AI, for WinVector LLC, a data science, machine learning, and AI consultancy, supplying both research, development, and training. Now, what I want to talk about is very fundamental, and I'm trying to avoid the word basic. This is something that once you internalize, you become a much better statistician or data scientist. Now, it's a thing that all of us teach, but I think not everyone's fully internalized. The two points that I want to make are, one, evaluate your models on data other than the data used to train them or simulate that using cross methods. Yes, there are adjustments that allow you to measure some things on training data, but there are a number of issues that really make that not the thing to do. So reserve some data or use cross validation methods to at least simulate training your model, sorry, evaluating your model on new data because that's how your model is going to be used on new data. So you'd like to simulate that one aspect of data. The second part is once you learned to not evaluate your model on training data, you quickly can internalize the concept that more data is better. Now, of course, we mean more data of the same sort. Now, the article has a really neat graph to show this. And the idea is, if we have a model, like a linear regression, which is where we have some dots, and we're trying to learn the trend through them. If we have such a model, one way to quantitatively measure the model quality is called root mean square error. Now, root mean square error is what is called a loss or a criticism, so lower is better. Now, what the article talks about is if the x-axis is the amount of training data and the y-axis is root mean square error, which is a loss, so lower is better, then on training data, you will see that the model's measured performance gets worse as you add more training rows. I think a lot of people don't remember this. This is true, and if given a moment to think about it, I'm sure every data scientist and certainly every statistician can recall this. But as you add more training data, your measured in-sample or untraining data model quality gets worse. The loss goes up. For test data, it's quite the opposite. Your measured performance tends to get better as you add more training data. The test evaluation and training evaluation are completely at odds. They say opposite things on this simple hyperparameter of how much data to use. And it turns out the right answer is more data is better. If you were to make that choice based on the training curve, training evaluation curve, you'd make the wrong choice. If you were to make that choice based on the test evaluation curve, you'd make the right choice. And finally, the last observation is, of course, we know about things such as adjusted metrics. But again, What is often forgotten is the adjusted metric measures the expected model performance of a perfect model using the variables we're using. It does not measure the expected future performance of the model that in hand that we actually fit. So the estimate tends to be this ideal performance that both these models are asymptoting to as we get infinite data, which is quite the luxury. I think this is the sort of thing where I say it. It might make a lot of sense to you, but once you work through the example, which is the written article, it makes quite a lot of sense. So more data makes training performance worse. Again, this is a loss, so higher is worse. More data makes test performance better. Test is your best simulation of future outcomes because it shares at least one property of future data. It wasn't seen during training the model. And classic adjustments like bezel correction or degrees of freedom, at best, tell you the performance of an ideal model, not the model you're working with. They basically predict where this asymptote is. And we have a complete example worked up, ready to share, which I think um, you really enjoy. I really enjoyed working through it, and I think it emphasized ideas in a quite different order and importance than I'm used to seeing. And again, my name is John Mount, and I'm from WinVector LLC, a data science, machine learning, and AI training, consulting, and research company. Thank you.